What's going on? What's up? What's good? What's happening? Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show, episode number 129, with me, your host, Agostino. What the fuck's going on? Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're fine wherever you are. Um, hope you're well rested, well hydrated, well lubricated. Um, hope you've done all your mobility exercises and you're in a, a much better place now because it's Friday and some of you motherfuckers look forward to the weekend. Um, for all you weekend warriors, I hope you have a great time. Um, for all you people that are going to be staying in and just like, you know, moping around, contemplating your life decisions, I hope you're doing well too. And for those of you who are ambivalent to either of the above and just want to get on with your life with zero interruptions, welcome to the show for you. <laughs> yeah, what's up, man? What's happening? It's, it's evening time right now. Um, I've decided to put together a little quick one just before I head off to go and DJ at Tap East later on today. Um, I had a very jam-packed day of running around um, picking up after myself, going for a workout, doing other bits and bobs that don't need to be discussed. So I had to do this late in the day, but you get it in anyway. All right. That's what you do. When you say you're going to do something, you still do it. You don't do what these fucking absentee fathers do, right? Where they promise their kid that they're going to pick them up to go take to some McDonald's, but they don't show up. And then they wonder when they're, and then, and then they wonder like five years later when they're jacking up to a random girl on Pornhub and they're like, fuck, isn't that my daughter? Do you know what I mean? And you wonder why, all right? That's a bit weird that you'd be jacking off to your daughter and not realizing who she was. Um, you would realize, wouldn't you, right? Even if you were absentee, you would realize, hmm, I recognize those today's. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully you would, because if you don't notice, that's weird. Um, it's sort of like I remember my dad once telling me, I don't, it's not about a sister because I don't have a sister. Thank God. If I had a sister, she'd be so battered, man. Look at my face. Honestly, if I had a sister. <laughs> I oh, thank the Lord that I have a sister, man. Because you know, you know, sometimes you get those boys that have sisters, and they look like they have brothers. But sometimes you get girls that that have brothers, but they look look nothing like their brothers. Thank God they're super pretty, and their brothers look like fucking brick walls. And sometimes you get those rare ones where you get a whole entire family full of dime pieces. Like the mum is hot, the dad is handsome, good looking dude. The, the, all the all the sons are very well put together. They have their different appeal. Like you get like a bad boy, you get like a well put together dude, and the girl is also a special creature. It's rare that happens. It's rare that you get like everyone in a lineage. Just it's fucking flames. I don't know how exactly that works. I know sometimes in athletics, it can cancel each other out. Sometimes if you get two very athletic people um, in a couple, they can cancel each other out, and they just create like a child that isn't that athletic or doesn't care that much about sports. And uh, I'm sure that can happen also with attractiveness. It must be, it must happen. Like if you pair up two of the most attractive people in the world, it doesn't necessarily mean they're always going to produce a, like a really attractive baby. Sometimes you got to have like a, a six out of 10 and eight out of 10, and then you're going to get a really hot person sometimes. And then sometimes when you get a, a two twos, two twos out of 10, you can sometimes get like a really hot person. But I remember, what's, what, what, why I bring this up? Oh yeah, I remember because my dad, right? My dad wants, um, because um, I've got like an older stepbrother who's a bit, you know, who's a bit um wild to say the least right and i remember when me and my, my dad were having issues <laughs> i remember my dad making me unintentionally laugh unintentionally he was describing about my brother's like oh this this that guy man he's a funny he's a nuisance like even one day i was walking in and flipping i don't know i think i was at Apton park he's like one day i was at Apton park and this fu- and this motherfucker well my dad doesn't say motherfucker because he's christian um this, this motherfucker walked past me and pretend like he didn't know who i was and then he's like, he's like, he knew who I was. He knew he saw me. And I called his name and he turned around, like, tried to, because my brother's like a bit, like, you know, he's a bit of a dodgy dude. So he must have turned around and tried to act surprised. Oh, hey, hey, dad, what's going on? It's like, come on, man. As if you wouldn't recognize your dad walking in. The first thing you reckon, you remember, like, when you're, well, when you're in a place, right? Um, when you're in a random location somewhere, the first thing you recognize is someone that you know, right? The two things you recognize, right? You recognize the fucking golden arches from McDonald's, right? Um, you recognize uh, an off license to maybe buy a drink on the way to a party or something. And you recognize a familiar face. You're always going to recognize these things or like a bus stop or something. You're never going to mistake a bus stop for a fucking, I don't know, for a phone box, right? Or for, I don't know, wherever me, for a, uh, I don't know. Well, you're not going to do that. So imagine my brother trying to uh, act like he didn't see my dad like <laughs> we'll, and we'll pass him not that you know sometimes when you see someone far away and you make the a mental decision you know what this person's kind of annoying or i just don't have time for a conversation and you meant you make the mental no, you make the mental judgment to tell your brain or to tell your eyes not to see that person and i think somehow i don't know why but i think somehow, because we because we're um because i guess be- hmm, how do you describe this 
I guess because we long for connection as human beings, sometimes, right? Uh, we're social animals. I think we somehow transmit our thoughts to each other even without realizing it. So I think sometimes when you make the decision, you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not down for a combo today. That person hears you, even though they don't hear you or they don't see you. They hear you, and they also make a mental note that I'm gonna pretend like I didn't see them too. And you, I'm sure everyone's done that, where you you know they saw you, but they didn't want to talk to you, and you know they saw you too and make the decision that they, you don't want to talk to them. And it's been like it's a mutual agreement. The way it gets weird and squirrely is where the person clearly knows you don't want to have a conversation, but they still just make a conversation anyway. You're like, fucking hell, man. Come on, man. We're grown up, so we don't need to do this pretend thing like we have to be friends. We all know we're not very... You know what I mean, like, you're, the older you get, the more you realise, like, I mean, you don't need to be making pretend like you're into things that you're not into or you want to talk to someone you don't want to talk to. You don't need to do that anymore. You don't need to do that. Um... You get older, and you start to realize sooner rather later. You know, you know who your friends are. You know who you know people you like. You know what you don't like. Um, you know what social surroundings you want to be in and what you don't want to be in. Last thing you want to do is start pretending. So if you see someone that doesn't want to have a conversation, just leave them be. You know, what I mean, just like back it off, rein it back, and go somewhere else. But sometimes I guess when you're, it can be difficult. Cause I know for me, I've done it before. I'm like, hey, right? Um, like actually the other day, Manchester, so fucking embarrassing. Um, we're walking through the city centre, going to a, a vintage shop somewhere, and you know, doing the whole like, where is this place? Where is this place? Right? It's weird that even with a fucking um Google Maps, right? Even with a even with a map, an interactive map on your phone, right? That somehow is able to triangulate your location uh within a ten meter radius, right? We still cannot find places that we're gonna get to. We still have trouble getting to it. Even with a map that has like a blue flashing light that indicates where you're at, right? And if you double tap that 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 flipping um, where you're at signal, it actually gives you a compass that shows you what direction you're facing in. Still, we can't find places. Still, we find it hard. <laughs> How trash humans are. And then the other day, the other bloody day, O2 um, decides to go, you know, I don't know, has, decides to have an internet blackout, right? the service goes down the whole of this fucking social media implode people can't update their status people can't send dms people can't whatever they they, they want to do with, in, with internet they can't do it and we're fucking panicking even i even i even i even i someone that doesn't panic was like in a state of panic when i went yesterday to go watch um young bane um at boiler room at the Islington assembly house a place i haven't been to before right is assembly house um I didn't search the location at home because I assumed I was going to do it on city map on the way to on the way to the station. I pull out my phone on the way to the station, check my city mapper, and guess what? No internet. And then I go back. I, I, it, it, it was so bad, right? I had to go back home, connect to the Wi Fi, load up city map, and then go out. It was 2018. And I can't trust myself to get somewhere without having to go back home to connect to the Wi Fi. How bad, how sad of an indictment is that of our modern. Uh, digital age that without internet half the world would fucking implode without internet back in the days if someone said that electricity was going to go off it'd be like, oh my god that's going to be crazy but i honestly i think you could you could if you wanted if you ask mo most people they'd probably prefer to have no electricity like no lights in their house and and live by candlelight but have wi-fi 100 percent. everyone would pick wi-fi wi-fi and 3g um what Wi-Fi and 3G over what do you call it? Um, over electricity any day of the week, and I and I and back in the day when I was younger, man, if you had, didn't have electricity, you you that was that's that was more painful. Internet was whatever because electricity you know, that was your TV. I spent most of my time watching television. I spent most of my time playing computer games. So or watching a movie that was your thing. Wi-Fi and stuff was a bit of a luxury. I remember that at that time, right? Because most people had dial-up or whatever, and then Wi-Fi started to get a bit cheaper when Talk Talk came along. Because I remember there, there, there was a period where internet um, uh, monthly Wi-Fi bills were quite expensive, and I remember this was before this was before it was connected to your phone line. Now they they come join. So now if we talk to they kind of subsidize the cost. I'm assuming. So you you usually pay um quite a good amount. Like even for the line that we have at the moment, you can get like essentially with BT, you can get Wi-Fi, a phone line, and um digital television, right, or streaming services like with BT Sport and shit. So it's a fairly um cost effective method in order to connect to the internet, uh, make sure you got a phone line, and also watch like whatever thing you want to watch. But back in the day, it wasn't like that. So your 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 monthly subscription was quite high. So quite a lot of families, even in, even from my area, even from ends, people didn't have internet like for a long, long time. Or if they did have internet, they had it like through the bookie way. Like you do it through a PlayStation, you do it through a, a phone that has 
2G or something like that, right? Internet. Um, but nowadays, you cannot. You just can't. Like you, you see the pandemonium that exists in a coffee shop when the internet is slow. You know I mean, like, or people can't get to the Wi-Fi. It's like the most crucial, crucial thing. And I noticed that even more so um, the other day, and I went to go watch Young Bay in the Islington Academy. Now, I've, I haven't been to Islington Academy before, but I've been to Old Street. I've been to Angel. I know the general direction is in, but I still need a map to tell me exactly where to go. It was fucking frightening um, how much you're relying on those kind of things. Um, yeah, so that, that O2 outage was weird, isn't it? Like, it came out of nowhere. We, there was no real warning about it. But people freaking out about it was a bit annoying too. It's like, come on, man. Like, these servers... And it, I think it, got, it, it went to show... It, no, I wouldn't say it's entire. I wouldn't say it's entitlement, but it did go to show just how little grace some people put in... Some people... But benefit of that would be... People put people attached to anything in general. That's probably why cancel culture exists, right? People don't give anyone benefit of the doubt. If if O2 is able to, you know, let's say we have three hundred. Let's say this. Let's say our three hundred sixty five days in a year, the service goes down twice, in the like for two days, four two full days, right? They get it right three hundred sixty three days of the year, and you still want to flip out. Like, that is insane, I think, for the most part. It doesn't make any sense, right? For Like, if they're able to... Because I don't know how... Again, um, just trying to keep your bedroom tidy, right? Just trying to make sure you're uh, doing a consistent wash cycle, right? Just trying to make sure your Oyster card is topped up adequately. Uh, just trying to make sure you book your holiday in, with enough time in advance is already difficult. I'd hate to imagine what how it is... Um, how difficult it is to um, maintain a service such as O2, right to keep that network running especially when you've got all the other networks on top of it like gift gaff and tesco and all that shit right that kind of use your uh bandwidth for your network whatever it may be called right and then it goes down for two full days in a year in in a year i think that's that's all right man like stuff's gonna go wrong it's like when people freak out about amazon prime orders and shit like consider like i'm i'm waiting for one now and it's like what it's it's kind of no it's a bit late in the day but most of the time it arrives sometimes you know they have those occasions where your item just doesn't turn up and they don't update you which is annoying a bit about it because again i'm not i'm not that bothered about delays i just want to be known i just want to be told about my delays it's like you know when a restaurant tries to ignore you and, and hope you don't notice that the, the food's taking long it's like motherfucker i came to eat right I, I i'm hungry so it's like i noticed that my food's taking longer because i'm hungry right you know what I mean? so i don't just, just let me know and it's okay i'll wait in it and last last thing i'm gonna do is flip out as someone making my food right that's that's one thing i have never I've, I've, i don't i don't see how that fucking works and there's actually a good little segue that way people who flip out about food i saw this fucking video and it made me absolutely howl with laughter but um yeah, it's just strange that reaction with the whole O2 thing. I I find it very, very, very bizarre. I don't know what's going on. I just people just like to complain. Um, there was a massive fucking B BBC article about it actually, which um I thought was flipping. It. The BBC's turned into like my version of the Daily Mail. It's not as salacious, but there's still some ridiculous stories out there, right? Just ridiculous things. Whoever's done the rebranding of BBC website, who's whoever's behind it, good job. Kudos onto them. I think sometimes they can verge on a bit clickbaity some of the titles that they talk about, whatever. But for the most part, they've done a very, very good job with the B BBC. Like I said, it's like a more, it's a less salacious version of Daily Mail. Daily Mail just feels too gossipy. Whereas this just this is just like, I don't know, I had what to describe the BBC News. Like the first three headlines, you got the backpacker missing in the New Zealand, um, you got Virgin Atlantic pilots uh, take Christmas strike, and you've got BBC um, new time host, uh, new uh, question time host confirmed. It's like you can't get more BBC than that. Do you know what I mean? None of the three stories make have any sort of like correlation to each other, but they work, right? Um, but you're interested in all of them. Not again, not, nothing too clickbaity, just good, honest reporting, right? But this this um article on the flipping O2 outage really really made me laugh. Hopefully I can find it on here. Where is it? Uh, O2. Yeah, there we go. O2 compensation for customers of outages. Imagine 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 complaining about imagine 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 being a grown ass man and complaining that your your O2 internet went out for I don't know what was it twelve hours. What do you want? How are they meant to calculate that? I guess if you're like a business and you've got a business account, what are you going to say? What, that they should give you a free month because it went out for 12 hours? Huh? What? I don't know. Maybe because I've worked in service industry jobs where people come in and complain about something that went wrong with their shoe or a piece of item of clothing they bought and then you try and give them a like for like replacement, but then they want more. 
because they've been inconvenienced. Like, what, what are you talking about? Sometimes things go wrong. And I'm, and I'm doing you a service by admitting that we done, you know, we done a bit of a boo-boo and replacing that shoe that you bought that the sole fell off with the shoe that with any shoe of that same value and hopefully the shoe doesn't, the sole doesn't fall off. What more do you want? Laces? What? Socks? What? So, uh, it's strange. I don't know how they're going to compensate that. But anyway, this, this, this article made me laugh just because, you know, I'm just trying to picture a, a, like a person emailing O2 and complaining about their internet going off without internet. <laughs> I guess you do it when internet comes on, but it's like, all right, cool. Now you've got the internet on. What do you do? What do you say? How, like, what? It, it, it's just like, yeah, I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand. Me not understand. But anyway, let's see. So, um, O2 disruption. Uh, some BBC News. O2 disruption. Operator offers a compensation over, out, over outage. Uh, mobile phone operator O2 has said it will compensate its customers for a, uh, following a day of disruption. Customers with a monthly subscription will be refunded the cost of two-day service by the end of January. PageGo customers will get 10% extra when they top up their phone in in the new year or 10% off when they buy data for a broadband service. It's like, I don't even know why they bother doing that. Why? Why, why are you even bothering doing that? You, the internet went down. All right, cool. It's up now, isn't it? Like, use it. Shut up. On Thursday, O2 should a joint apology. Everyone's apologizing. Kevin Hart's apologizing. Lennon Dunham's apologizing again. Apology. Apo- These apologies, man. Like, <laughs> I'm fed up with apologies, man. I want someone just to like, stop apologizing. Just stop. Everyone just stop apologizing. I made a mistake. Get over it. Like, that's it. Um, the compensation for customers on monthly subscriptions includes small businesses and mobile broadband users. Business customers are advised to contact their O2 corporate account, account manager to discuss compensation. Like, what the fuck? Who does that? Who does that? Like, who do, who goes through with that? Yeah, a- anytime someone's asked, anytime, anytime someone's told me to uh, contact uh, customer service to, you know, sort out an issue that i'm having with a service i say yeah yeah i'll do that and i don't do it sometimes someone will write down an email for me give me a card i'm not gonna do it i'll just leave it i'll just take the l that's it i take the l i don't go home and write a review and complain i don't go home and criticize on so i don't do it i just will vote with my feet it's the same with like shows i don't like if i don't like a show i'm just not gonna mention it i'm just not gonna talk about it i'm not gonna go and spoil everyone's fun when everyone's you know people that do that stuff it's like there's a couple people that I follow on social media just, just just because I like to like you know I want to the whole like surround yourself with positivity thing is a bit stupid because you live in the real world right you have to you have to you have to be able to maneuver in a world full of people who see uh, their glasses half empty all the time I think it's good because it allows you to put your own thing in perspective and be able to like know how to like um uh, exist in that kind of environment because I remember there was a, there was a time in my life where I tried to always be the positive influence in the group or the positive influence in the space right and sometimes it can rub people up the wrong way they can it can come to it's like because sometimes come across a bit disingenuous and it also come across like you think you're better than them right you hey let, you sh- don't worry about that man. i don't even want to get emotional about this thing man you should you should be more like me but it's like no that's condescending because they should not be more like you why you know i mean because they're them right wherever it is right so um i think it's also a good cheat, a good cheat uh, tactic to do that is to follow follow people on social media who you probably won't talk to in real life. It's, it's it sounds counterintuitive, I know, but I think there's something really there's something really good there's something um of value that uh, I get from it. For instance, like I follow some raging feminists on social, right, who are always talking about the patriarchy and power dominances and intersectionality and just they're all the buzzwords right all the sjw buzzwords they're always throwing them out every single day it's like they're fighting they're fighting some sort of on, they're fighting some online war that only them and their group of friends know exists because most of these things that we think are big stories on the internet if you don't have the internet or you don't or you're not obs- as obsessed with stuff going on in the digital space you have no idea what's happening and even if you're on a digital space it's like we all live in these we all live in these little siloed communities don't we on on even on the internet on, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on your iMessage, on your WhatsApp. We live in these silo communities. So we only know what we know based on the people that we're friends with or the things that we follow. So sometimes you just don't know things because you just don't know. But I like to follow um, people that I wouldn't necessarily hang around with on social because you get those kind of people that are always complaining, right? Or that always have something snarky to say about something. Like oh, like the other day, I saw for some guy I follow on social. Like, oh, is anyone bored of those Spotify graphics yet? <laughs> it's like, shut the fuck up, man. They happen every year. 
Spotify sends you a little roundup of the stuff that you listen to. And it's quite cool. And I, I, I don't mind it. I think it's quite nice to see the numbers uh, that rolling up, the little roller decks. I think they, whoever handles the design of that knows what they're doing. There's something really satisfying about seeing the, the amount of things listened to, minutes and all that sort of malarkey, sort of like gauge the artists that you liked in the year, blah, 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 blah. It's quite nice. And it's a little graphic that you can share on your socials. They've even plugged in the shareability at the end of the slideshow. You can share it on all your social media channels. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Some of the artists that upload their music on Spotify are also using it as opportunities to thank fans. And it's also maybe a good way for them to kind of... I'm, I'm assuming on the artist side, they get to see where there's where the most streams are coming from in terms of location around the world so it must it must be interesting for a kid in fucking new jersey to find out actually his biggest audience is in the philippines right it's quite cool like no problem but you know there's always that one person on social like oh is anyone bought the graphics yet <laughs> it's like shut the fuck up honestly but that person's the same person's gonna complain to the o2 about those things so sometimes i like following that just to kind of you know, just to kind of gauge the temperature, you know, and just also be aware that that person exists. Because I, you know, sometimes I live in my head like, oh my god, people, I don't, I don't know how people could do that. It's very, it's very easy. People could, people do that stuff all the time. People are fucking, we're all psychos at the end of the day, Jim. That's, that's what we are. We're all bloody psychos. Anyway, um, this article continues. Um, O2 has over twenty five million users. Imagine trying to, imagine trying to make sure a network that has 25 million users doesn't go down from time to time like god almighty um and also provide services for sky tesco and gifgaf and like a mobile networks which have another 7 million users so that's that's a lot of users that's 32 million jesus christ um services such as the bus terminal information are also affected while many oh i didn't know that bloody hell o2 is plugged in isn't it so do you think those bus terminal oh do you know the O2 Wi-Fi that you get on the streets? You think that you think those bus terminals have a Wi-Fi routers um, built into them? That's crazy, isn't it? They don't they don't usually work though, do they? They're not they're not that great. Um, I remember I did buy a parcel them once. They don't they don't work that well. Um, it's sort of like that street Wi-Fi people have, isn't it? But I guess if you don't if you have a contract, you never probably use those kind of things. Um, yeah. Uh, how are people affected? Here are the complaints. Look at these. Look look. And they're all men as well, Jesus Christ. Because I don't know, guys don't usually whinge like that, do they? Or do they whinge like that? I don't know if it's guys. It's a guys thing. But I guess if you've got a business, it doesn't really matter, does it? But yeah, Jesus Christ. Imagine that. Imagine your dad doing this. Like going on TV and complaining that his network went down. And it's all men. It's weird, isn't it? It's all adults too. It's not kids. You, Oh, all these kids got to get off their phones, man. They've got to experience the world, live outside. But, you know, back in my day. Look, they're all... They're all over thirty-five. <laughs> it's nuts, isn't it? None of those guys is is it, none of those guys could pass for a teenager. None of them, right? It's like it's crazy. Isn't it? They're complaining about kids being on their phones a lot, but who's who, who are the people crying, bitching and moaning on social media that the O2 went down? All the adults who can't get out all their fucking woke tweets, isn't it? Um. Anyway, um. It says here, Luke Stag runs a plumbing business. Stag, Luke Stag. You can't get a more plumber name than Luke Stag, isn't it? Luke Stag. That's, that's, that's like someone I went to school with, isn't it? Like James Murphy, right? James Smith, right? Everyone always knew their surnames. Um, Mum owned a fish and chip shop. Dad was a black cab driver. He had all the tracksuits. I mean, like, mad. He used to, you know those kind of kids in school that used to bring like, um, you know when you're in school and the first, you know, you know when you're poor, the first time you see a 50 pound note, uh, you think it's fake. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened to me in school <laughs> when one boy at a trip in school bought a, a 50 pound note like he had it as part I'm, he had much more money than that in his hand and he showed me it and i thought it was fake i thought it was like um like domino money i didn't know that you know like you know when you don't know the value of something you're just touching it anyhow hey that's 50 pounds what, what, what's I, I think my reply was like what's 50 pounds imagine <laughs> imagine saying that what's money money what's that <laughs> you be used to fucking uh, trading in pebbles <laughs> this whole time. Money, wow. Um, yeah, Luke Stag. Anyway, so let's continue the article. Uh, Luke Stag runs a plumbing business and and depends on his phone, but could not get through to customers or use his sat nav, which I guess is a lot in it because I get, uh, could you ring someone? No, you couldn't. No, you couldn't ring. The whole network was on. Uh, then the non-use of sat nav would be annoying too if you're a plumber because it's not like you're being a black cab driver, is it? You need to get to... You don't necessarily know the routes that you're going to go on because, you know, 
you're uh, you're in the service business um, and you're not working within just one location you work all over the place when you're a plumber so you probably do need sat nav um uh, la, la, la. but i guess if you've got stuff like um what's what's that old school sat nav people used to use um fuck the one that's in a in a not because i know people now just use their maps whatever they have on their phone or if you live in america you use that um app called ways but there was another thing got the name of it see what happens when technology takes over it, you even forget the names of other technologies that happened previously or that were previous to you or that meant so much to you. I remember I used to love my MySpace updates and now I just don't think about that shit at all. Um, from time to time, I do wonder what Tom from MySpace is doing, but I'm sure he's, he cashed out, so he's fine. Um, he said he would never know how many jobs he'd missed out during the first day. I would never know. You would also never know how many jobs you miss out if you had a cold, Luke Stagg. Grow up. In addition, he could not contact those he's supposed to be visiting and his day was wasted. I'm 36 years old, so I know how to use a map, but I couldn't make calls. So he could get there, but he couldn't let them know that he was in front, in front of the door. Can't you ring the doorbell? Can't you knock? Luke Stagg? Like, what? Uh, mine was not a proper emergency, but there was a wider point. I want to know what happens if it went down for even longer. So you're... Not complaining, but you're complaining. Oh, that classic one, isn't it? That's mad, isn't it? So he's not bothered, but he's bothered. That's basically it, isn't it? He's basically bothered, not bothered. Okay. All right, Luke Stagg. I get you, man. He said he he said when he lost data coverage on previous occasions, he was offered vouchers to use an O2 shop. However, he was not impressed with the offer. What more do you want if the service goes out for a day? Or 12 hours and I give you a voucher. What more do you want? How else are we meant to quantify this? How do we break this down? How do we um how do we uh sum up your loss of earnings? And are they solely my loss of earnings? Should should you not have um should Luke Stag not have um what do you call it? Contingency plan in place just in case his phone line goes down, or in case his van breaks down, or in case he forgets his toolbox? Shouldn't there be a contingency plan in there? Like, what the fuck is this about? Adults, man. These are is what I'm saying? These are adults that complain about this. Not kids who are all millennials. No, it's the adults that are crying about this. And article continues about like, people whinging, 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 whinging. But what, what's the problem here? Uh, Ericsson president um, Bjorg Ekholm, Ekholm said an internal route an, in, an, in, an initial root cause analysis had indicated that the main issue was expired certificate in the software versions installed at their customers. I imagine that. It's always these things you overlook, isn't it? Some, someone forgot to update software and everyone's network goes down, right? Someone for, it's like um, the, master, the company MasterCard uh, was expired and somebody forgot to update the card details so they couldn't update the payment. And whoever main email those like, hey, um, we tried to charge your account and it didn't go through, emails goes through, it didn't, you know, no one checks that email address because it's probably got a fucking, you know, a billion emails in the inbox and probably auto-deletes every single day anyway. So they missed it and then everyone's in there went down. Classic, and I fucking love it. I fucking love it. Um, it's all like when those, um, it's all like that person that pressed the wrong button um, and sent out a, a nuclear warning to everyone in LA. It's like some sometimes human error, isn't it? It's like someone just like, it's, I don't know, he or she was having a sandwich on their desk or, you know, laughing at some YouTube clip they're watching, bang the table and accidentally pressed the button. Like, ah! Do you know what I mean? Or meant to shut down the system and, and, initi- and by mistake press the fucking nuclear warning. <laughs> ah! Oh, I fucking love it. Anyway, but yeah, O2, O2 Network went down. It made it very difficult for me to get to the Young Bane show. But I got there in the end. Um, on the way there, though, I did realise how weird... Or how difficult it is to get places without a map. Uh, how over reliant we are with the internet. And also how weird how weird you feel or how awkward I felt asking someone for directions. When you're when you're talking when you're trying to ask a stranger where you should be going, right? Um, or what direction you should be going in, it's very weird because number one, people don't want to talk to strangers anyway, in general. It's just not a thing that happens, especially in the UK. No one wants to talk to you. Leave me the fuck alone, right? That's what everyone's that's a signal everyone's sending out. Leave me alone, 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 leave me alone. Even in a even in a rush hour traffic, even on the morning commute, everyone's kind of even though we're so close to each other that I can smell this lady's um shampoo, I can smell that guy's boxes. Do you know what I mean I can smell that kid's chicken and chips? Even though we're that close to each other, right? Everyone's emitting a signal. Leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. If it's not the phone inside of our, if, if it's not a phone in front of our face glaring at us as a barrier, then it's a book. And if it's not a book, 
then it's headphones. If it's not headphones, it's the map on the wall. Everyone's just trying to not leave me alone, right? So imagine then trying to imagine in that environment, Agostino running along the street up to Islington Assembly Hall, la 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 la, young Bane boiler room right and then trying to ask a stranger for directions my fucking big black ass trying to ask someone for directions the first thing that happens is you get the you know what i mean that that kind of panic look and you have to i guess we say as a guy i say as a black guy i won't say because i can only speak from my experience so i can i can't speak of my pain all right my pain but from my experience as a young ic free male living in east london um you have to be, you have to, you have to inoculate, 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 whatever that word is, right? Yourself to the reaction that you get sometimes from beta males and from females, right? Sometimes beta males will do that kind of like scared look that you're going to jack their iPhone or jack their Apple Watch. And also some ladies, right? Get a little bit scared that a big black guy's like putting their hand on the shoulder, which you shouldn't do. Like, hey, excuse me, or like, you know, asking them something in general, right? So you have to be, you have to knock yourself from that reaction because it can, it can, it can make you feel, it can bum you out a bit, right? Case in point, uh, I laughed hysterically about it, but someone else could probably cry and write a blog about it. But I thought it was just funny. I was coming up to my building one day um, after a run. Um, I think it was during the evening. And I had, you know, like when you have that runner's high, but I had it towards the end of the run. So I was like feeling good. I was jogging. And I, I, I even had a little sprint on the way home. I ran up the stairs. I mean, I was just like singing. Um, I don't know. Playboy Kyle was probably playing. That's the only thing I listen to when I run. That Dali album's still on rotation. So I was probably, you know. They don't know it's me. Yeah, fuck up all that. Whatever. I was, I was skipping up the stairs. And then as I burst through the door, like. Um, a lady came around the corner and she um, and we kind of met each other just as I was coming out just just pop around the corner and she was like ah! like fully screamed but her scream immediately made me laugh I started busting up like I just couldn't stop laughing and she immediately was like oh my god I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I'm so sorry like really really um, apologetic about it because I, I guess she you know she, she saw she heard herself scream and saw what it looked like, right? This big black guy, he's not, I did nothing wrong, I was just going home, right? And she's screaming, and it's like, shit. I mean, she didn't, she felt bad about her prejudice, but you're a lady, right? She's like, what? I don't know, 60 kg soaking wet? Like, Jamie, a small, tiny lady living in an apartment block somewhere. I'm coming around the corner of a doorway. She's coming down the doorway. Like, it's fine. You should You should be, that's your only defense you have. That's the only defense you do have if, I'm, if I end up being a psycho. Screaming, right? So it's fine. Um... But I was laughing so much. I just laughed so much. It just made me laugh the whole entire day. I just kept thinking, wow, that's only a react that's a reaction you're only gonna get if you're a big black guy. Or if you're like an imposing figure for the most part. Um that's the only thing you're gonna get. I wouldn't say I'm imposing, I wouldn't say I take up room, I wouldn't say I'm fucking yoked, you know what I mean? I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't say I'm dangerous, you know what I mean. I wouldn't say these elbows, you know what I mean, are like fucking flying daggers, right? Um but you have to just get used to that reaction, right? But it, it just—it was just yesterday. It was just another reminder of it, like Jesus Christ. <laughs> number one, in general, anyway, asking people direction just fucking a no, a no, no. And number two, just go, especially from behind. I did that a couple times from behind because I, I was panicking about if I was gonna get in late. Um, <laughs> and the reactions of these people was like, everyone was like giving you, the, oh my god, what's happening here? Um, but yeah, uh, and I quick as soon as they turn around, I quickly said, "Oh, by the way, I'm sorry, I'm on O2 and the network's down." I quickly had to establish. It's sort of like a good salesman. Uh, you have to quickly, you have to either quickly establish the prem of why you're there, or you have to like completely distract them. So I had to get, I had to set my, I had to set my store down. I guess like a bit, I guess it's like a good, um, a good pickup artist, right? If you know how to pull girls, I guess that's part of the what you do, right? You make your intentions known. Like you, you're not trying to be their, you're not trying to be their gay best friend, or you completely distract, or you can like in terms of like you completely give off the impression that you're not interested, and you give two fucks, right? And then you slowly but surely, you know, work your way back in there. Um, but yeah, in this instance, I was not trying to pull. In this instance, I was just trying to extract um location of the instant assembly. And what I did learn was that you shouldn't ask for directions, and people don't know where they live. A lot of people that lived in that area didn't know where Incident Assembly was. Which happens to me too. People will be in the area and I'll say, oh, do you know what such and such street is? I have no idea. And then sometimes I feel bad for saying no idea because I, 
I think they they were expecting me to know because they look they look oh I'm sure this this this, this kid knows where this place is because he looks like he lives here and then you don't know they're like fucking hell then how am I gonna find it so they feel a bit bad so sometimes I remember what they said and as I walk down the street I will quickly search on my, my map or I remember it for later and I'll be like oh fuck it's literally the next road around the corner for me and I had no idea what the road was called so that wasn't a surprise but Jesus Christ anyway it took me long long enough intended to get there I finally got there and um to see Young Bane at Boiler Room. And yeah, it was a good show for, for for the most part. It took way too it took too it took way too long to get started. The store the doors open at seven. It does close at twelve. And the live act started at about eleven or some shit like that. Like they filled in Miss Banks. No, Je- the Jeremiah dude, Jeremiah something, the DJ guy, Miss Banks and Young Bane all played within the space of an hour, I think. Somehow they fitted all them in. No, is it no or two the two hours? I think it might have been two hours maybe. Yeah, I think the DJ guy that's one one hour set. It was all right then, but I guess it kind of dragged out because you had to. You had all these DJs playing beforehand. I think about three DJs before, and um, they were fairly mediocre. I wouldn't say mediocre because I think if you're in that scene, you probably do like that kind of music. But it reminded me just why it reminded me why it was so hard to go to places like Vision sometimes, or even places like uh, Living Proof. For as good as those parties are, when you're only playing hip hop and R and B, um, there's only a small pool of stuff. No, that's not true when you're playing a certain type of hip-hop and r&b especially in parties you tend to always go for the same everyone tends to go for the same sort of tracks all the djs do it everyone does it it's not like a thing about pointing somebody out they all do the same thing but it's even it's even it's even um it get emphasized more it, or it's exasperated a little bit more when you're at a boiler room because some of those djs some of those guys don't turn up until they're set like most club sets too sometimes but i guess if you're a living proof guy you're part of that group you're probably going to be there anyway right you're probably part of that contingent if you're a work it person probably going to be there but i guess in that some 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 deeds some places you DJ only turn up for the set so you wouldn't you won't know what the guy before you played if it's an r&b hip-hop night and you all play the same kind of turn up party music you're all going to play the same sort of tune so i must have heard the same tune from i definitely heard a minimum of five songs from uh, yeah, I definitely from the, for the, the three DJs definitely played five of the same songs, hundred percent. And it's nuts because I think the music geeks or the or the music nerds like myself notice that straight away. Like, okay, you even before the track comes in, you know he's gonna play that wrong song. So that happened. But then casual fans start realizing later, and it kind of you see, you saw the atmosphere drop as everyone said, "Hold on, didn't they just play that? Didn't they just play that?" But you know what I mean. I noticed it before, but I saw I could I could see it. In the orders, everyone started to like vibe side to drop a little bit, but then it kind of picked up again when the I forgot what the kid's name is Jeremiah something and try and get up on it and give him a shout. Actually, he was a good DJ man. He he smashed it. He plays a lot of like the UK hip hop stuff, um, um, some drill stuff, some Afro beats, but he also played some house stuff. Like he he seemed like a good party DJ. He reminded me a lot of Champion that we used to book back in the day for so special, like just a, a, a all round uh, an all round good DJ. Because he can play most stuff, right? If you give him, if you gave him a, a, a playlist of like the best, um, let's say reggaeton songs, he could mix it into stuff that he already plays, and he'll, he'll make it sound sick. So I want to shout this guy out. Let me see if I can find him. Um, what was his name? Let me see my boiler room thing here. Ba ba ba. But it's the first time I go into boiler room for a while. Well, actually, I, I, I don't actually apply for these things too often. First time I've been there in a long time, and um, yeah. In that kind of environment, I think the last one I went to was the Virgil one um, in Oval Space. That was quite cool. I forgot what that was for. But in general, that was, that's something I used to live and die for. Man. I used to love that shit back in the day. And it was also, it was fun to be around in that kind of environment. But it also was a reminder of just how fucking old I am, man. Like, there were so many cool looking young people there. Like, do you know what I mean? Just like ripe and young and just fresh faced and full of optimism do you know what i mean just i remember what that was like back in the day when you're just getting started you just got your little band of boys your band of girls you're all looking amazing you've all got these projects you're doing or things you're thinking about doing like you just do you know what i mean the world is literally your oyster right i mean you haven't been beaten down just yet and i think now is a good era too because there are no gatekeepers if you want to be like an influencer girl or if you want to be um a cultural critic or something of those kind of lines you just pull out your phone start recording yourself right um you start uploading stuff on instagram you don't need to work at that advice you don't need to go work at days you don't need to go at id you don't need to do anything just just make a youtube show um you just hang out with your 
boys uh, you just i don't know live stream on on instagram you don't need to ask a setting for these fucking um gatekeepers in the industry to let you in which i which i think is quite palpable you can feel it in the atmosphere like everyone's trying to like do something do you know what i mean everyone's trying to like connect network and build so it's quite nice a bit cringy but nice i loved it i love to see that kind of energy but it was also a stark reminder of just how far removed i am from that whole um scene overall i don't mind it I, I quite like it i quite like being away i quite like dipping in dipping out dipping in dipping out um i like not working in the industry i think that's very important so i think that was something that i kind of um not the older the, the more the older i've become the more i've started to value it it's always something that i've always kind of kept in my mind anyway especially since the whole like 1948 nike days and all that how that went kind of south but the, for all the errors that was happening on their end, a lot of errors also happened on my end, like not understanding just how much of my ass I had to give up in order to kind of get the thing that I wanted to. I wasn't willing to do that, which is my fault. Do you know what I mean, you, you don't go into those kind of things naively and think, oh, it's going to let me in because I'm good at what I do. No, no, no. You have to have connections. You have to have good relationships. You have to be able to kiss a couple of asses, you know, shake some hands. And I wasn't willing to do that at all, to my detriment. Again, it's not like something I'm proud of. I think it's a virtue. Oh, yeah, I stood up for my morals because that's stupid, right? Um, Especially because they're all a bit misguided. I don't know. It was, there was some weird things going on at the time. But I think nowadays, if you're a kid, there's just, you don't need that at all. You don't even need it, right? You don't even need it. Like Even the idea of a young influencer now is signing, signing exclusively. Like, you'd be an absolute idiot if you're a young influencer that wore really cool clothes on Instagram, took pictures of your outfit to sign an exclusivity deal with Nike or some shit and say you're only going to wear Nike shoes and clothing. It's, you'd be nuts. You'd be nuts. You'd be nuts. It doesn't make any sense. The whole reason why people want to follow you is because they trust that you have an honest opinion. You, they trust that if Nike bring out a dead shoe, you're going to say it's dead, right? Or you're, or you're not going to wear a certain brand because you just don't rip it. Like, you just don't, it's not something that you're about. Like, for me, with fucking Reebok, Right? I love, I'm a, I'm a CrossFit fanatic. I've been CrossFitting since, I don't know, for a long time. And even when Reebok Nanos looked amazing, now they look shit, right? I don't think that they look that great now. But when Reebok Nanos, well, well, well yeah, when Reebok Nanos looked the best back in the day, when they had that kind of meshy cage thing on the side, they looked amazing. I, I, I refused to wear them. I refused. The only CrossFit shoe I bought was the, was the Metcon when they came out because they, they just looked better and I just don't wear Reebok. Um, but yeah, you'd be a, you'd be a fool to sign an exclusivity deal. The whole point of it is to kind of you know, um, you know, uh, have as many partnerships as possible in loads of different areas. You know, you just seen um, what you call it. You've just seen um, what's his face, Virgil signed a deal with Evian. You just see the other day too, uh, Lucas Abat, the influencer. He's he's the face of a new Margella campaign. Um, just partnerships with everyone. Do you know what I mean like get as many on the table, uh, diversify your portfolio and go from there really but yeah um the show was quite cool djs were too long um miss banks was a st uh the, oh the dj's name i forgot let me shout him out um what was the dj's name before i talk about miss banks because she was flames um the dj that played that i thought was really fucking good was who where's his name here oh it's not even got on the list let me view event page Oh yeah, and they'll get it's a links collaboration, of course. They were they were uh, they were like uh, bottles of links in the toilet, like free. You could take like little canisters, like quite a lot of. It. I think two hundred fifty mil, which was fucking nuts to think. To, 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 but um, yeah, um, the show was fucking awesome. I loved it. I had a great bloody bloody time. Um, everyone was looking amazing. Loads of great outfits. Oh, actually, the sounds on this actually. Let me let me play a little bit. Should I play a little bit of it or like get yanked off YouTube? Hopefully, I don't get yanked off YouTube. But yeah. Um, Everyone looked amazing. Great outfits all over the place. The DJ's name, if I can try and get it up on here before. Oh, there he is. Uh, Jeremiah Asaima. He was, Asiyama, he was amazing. He was really good. He fucking smashed it. Um, what's his bio say here? Uh, called a legend in the making by the likes of Tiny Temper and by Toddler T. You can't be quoting stuff like that though, can you? Legend from Toddler T and Tiny Temper, really? Anyway, Jeremiah Sun has risen sharply through the ranks of South London represent. So far, he has shared a lineup at Glastonbury with Kojo Funds, Mist, Cadet and more. Appeared in Ibiza doing Disruption London alongside Tiny and Gigs and launched his own night, uh, Basuga. Baswaj? Baswaj? Basuga? I don't know. Whether, Baswaji? I don't know what that means. Jeremiah plays the best in Garage, UK Funky, House, Trap, Bashman and loads of more. Yeah, loads more is emphasis that he fucking smashed it. Like, he was really good. That Jeremiah Samuel guy, I recommend you check him out. Um, 
he was really fucking good um yeah it was a good night i i really enjoyed my time there um my standout performance i'd say was miss banks because i don't know that much about her um i heard the zezzy i heard her do the zezzy freestyle the zizi the kodak black yeah, um, she she's got a little freestyle that I'll pop in on Graham Daily, so I know her from that um specifically, but I don't really know most of her catalog. But she smashed it, and she looked yeah, she's a bit tasty, is Miss Banks a little bit tasty? Um, so she was amazing live, really did a good job, um, great stage presence, and you know what she did too with that was fucking cool, no vocal backing track. She actually rapped, she actually rapped and sing. She rapped and sang. And the singer voice sounded quite cool. I heard her do a couple runs towards the end of her tracks. I see you. I see what you're doing there. Some of the runs were fucking nice. Like, she's got an actual good voice on her. Um, she's got them pipes. She got that, you know. Um, yeah. She's built like an Amazonian. Like, you know what I mean? you got to see her live to fucking witness the greatness there. Um, she did a really cool thing and invited um, two random girls on stage that were getting turned up on stage. It was quite cool. I really like that kind of stuff when they do that. So, that was awesome. So yeah, Miss Banks, my stand-up performance. And obviously the main man, Yon Young Ben came on. He, he actually smashed it, to be honest. Um, I wasn't... A, I'm not the biggest fan of... I love Young Ben, but I just I just think the album was a bit of a letdown. Not because of him specifically, but I think in general, these UK guys, if for me personally, being a fan of the UK hip-hop scene or Afrobeats, all these guys, I quite like their stuff on... I prefer the stuff they do on YouTube, the kind of throwaway shit they throw up, like... I, I equate that kind of stuff to like, I'm sure there's people out there that prefer Drake's SoundCloud um, stuff than his album stuff. I'm sure there's geeks out there that have made a compilation of um, Lucy's and singles that haven't been put into albums, like um, 4 p.m. in Calabasas, I'm assuming. That's a good example, right? That's one of my favorite Drake's songs. I don't think that was on any any project. But I'm sure there's people out there that prefer that side of Drake than the Drake that we get in album form. Because obviously when he's in album mode, he has to then make an album that's going to appease fans, you know, that cover you know, the whole entire spectrum of Drake fans. But I sometimes think with the UK hip hop dudes, the thing that got them to the dance was uh Froze, right? If you look if you like Young Bay, you like Froze, right? One of these like standout tracks that's on um YouTube that is an absolute banger. Then when the album comes out, you're like, what's this? Do you know what I mean it's like it's not the same thing. You know, you don't want a whole track full of Froze. Don't get me wrong. Um you don't want that, but and you don't expect it either because he's an artist. Yes to make it's like a it's like um Mick Mill um, album. I think um, the interview the other day actually with Breakfast Club and Charmaine was like, ah, oh, I don't like it when you make girl girl records. Mick Mill's like, yeah, I'm not making them for you, am I? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I can make a hook, I can make like a, a street anthem, and I can also make tracks for the ladies, right? Because girls like me too. Um, so we shouldn't be naive enough to expect, um, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't be shocked if like President T has to make a wifey rhythm, right? It should be okay. If he if he becomes like a big pop star, then he should be able to make a wifey rhythm too. But sometimes I feel like these newer guys, they do the departure is just too stark for me. It's just doesn't there's no correlation to it. It's a bit too eh. Um so yeah, that's the thing I was a bit disappointed about. And I haven't played the album since. I I I played it I played it through once and that was about it. But then when he performed a couple of tracks live, they were a lot better in in live. The Afro beat stuff, the Afro pop stuff, I'm way over it. I'm, I think I'm done, man. It's so annoying. I don't understand how people can go to a night that just plays complete Afro beats all the way through because it's not dynamic. That's the thing about it. Like Afro, especially the Afro beats that we have, um, the kind of like um, UK Afro beats, it's so bubblegummy. It's not. The, it's not even. The, it's not. It's not even like the stuff that the guys are actually doing in Africa. It's just. It's so commercial sounding. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's it just, and it all sounds the same. It all sounds, it's all got this, probably the same sort of BPM, it's about 80, top, max about 101, 102, 103. Um, it's the same structure, it's all the same, it just sounds so formulaic. It reminds me a lot of like the, the towards the tail end of UK Funky, when it started to get a bit shit. It just sounded all too similar. Everyone's trying to copy whoever was like number one spot. Um so yeah, so sometimes the Afrobeat stuff can it just sounds it's just horrible. And sometimes the lyrics on the Afrobeat songs, like if you listen to Chipmunk's um album, he's got a couple Afro pop like songs on there. And some of the bars it's like fucking hell. Like you're Chipmunk, man. Like, what the fuck are you saying? Like, you're the bar god. You've got lyrics for days, and this is oh anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm not a fan of it, but I have to admit, seeing Young Bane perform Afrobeat type songs live with a room full of girls, you you feel it differently. When, you, when you're hearing them like, ah, screaming when that song comes on, right? You're like, okay, I get it now. 
you know what I mean? Like, you can clearly see he has, like, quite a big fan base. He has quite a big fan base with girls, too. Girls actually like him. Um... Which is not, which I'm sure can't be said for a lot of the UK drill or hip hop guys. I'm sure not all of them have a lot of girls, but I'm sure he appreciates it. So why not play up to it, right? And Afrobeats have a pop is like one of the most, you know, popular genres going around now. So I don't blame him for doing that, but God damn it, man. Do you know what I mean? I just want to just tone it down a little bit. Tone it, tone it, tone it down a little bit. But, um, but yeah, I, he, he was very good too, performance wise. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of, I don't know. I don't know any of these people. They don't, none of these are my cousins are my friends. But I'm just proud and seen overall that you can get... This is the first time I've been to a boiler room with UK people like this, right? In live, whereas in terms of a live show, I haven't necessarily been to any of those um, main... Uh, I haven't seen any of the drill guys live or anything. But it's. I feel kind of proud to go to a night and just hear these guys perform their music. And I would have... I think I would have preferred a bit if the DJs that played beforehand played a lot more UK-centric stuff. Just to kind of tie in with the whole occasion that happened because it kind of felt like it was a bit too like you could you could you could throw that those sets that they were playing in there, you could throw that into Club Live and it wouldn't be out of place. I mean no one would notice no one would, no one could tell that London DJ was playing in Club Club Live if they played. Because it'd just be the same shit they hear anyway. So sometimes I can it, it annoys me sometimes when it's like it's super American sets and then UK people come on, it's a bit annoying. Or I get a bit bummed out when they play loads of American tracks and they play like a UK track and the crowd kind of goes a bit low because no one's actually playing. Because it's weird because some of the guys that are like the popular dudes within the UK scene, they might be popular, but no one's actually playing their songs like on their phone and shit. It's weird how that kind of works. I don't know why, why that is. Um... Or the stuff that plays in a club isn't necessarily what people have on their phones, right? I don't know how, I don't know. It's just strange. But I would have preferred maybe a, a bit more of a UK-centric set from the, DJ, from the DJs beforehand. Also, it was annoying that most of them played loads of the same songs again and again, which reminded me again why I don't like to go to like um, hip-hop nights in, in London. are just so samey. There's no variation to most of them. That's why, for the most part, when I did go to live, um, or sorry, Visions or whatever, I'd go specifically to see like... Um, Craig Wade play, right? He's one of my favorites. Because he plays like new current he plays at least he plays the current stuff. Like he'll play play he'll play Playboy Carty. He'll play a sl- a sly a, a shy glizzy track. He'll play Little Baby. He'll play current stuff. He'll play like a gunner track. He'll play now. He won't keep playing fucking I don't know, Biggie Smalls or Tupac or whatever. It's just like, come on, man. Allow me, man. A Tribe Called Quest again and again and again. 50 Cent again and again and again and again. This Drake record again, that Drake record. It's like the same shit. It's just very, a bit more variation I'd, I'd, I'd hope for. But um, yeah, I had a good time, man. I thought it was good fun. Um, Again, reminding me again how fucking old I was. Had a good little dance. Sweated my absolute ass off. So if anyone saw me sweating buckets there. And we're mystified why I was perspiring so much. I'm sorry. I like to dance. I think it's nice, man. When you're in a big open space, you don't get... When, when, when else? Where, where else do you get to dance? Think about it. You don't get to dance places, right? It's rare you get to go, go to a place where you get to dance. And dance is one of the most liberating free experiences that you can... It's such a free expression, man. Do you know what I mean? You just wave your arms around the air. You don't even need to be coordinated. Just like... Even if someone doesn't know how to dance, seeing someone enjoy themselves when music is playing... It makes you smile. You just want to... Man, look how how much fun he or she's having, man. Good on you, man. You can't two-step to save your life, right? You're the most uncoordinated person I've seen in my life. Look like you tied your laces together. That's how badly you're dancing. But... You you being happy makes me happy. Like, that. Well, that's what you want to see. Like, last thing you want to see is people on, on the side of the wall, uh, you know, mean mugging. <laughs> Which, to be fair, that crowd wasn't. Um, this, this crowd came out to dance. The girls looked banging. All the girls had great outfits on, you know, track suits. I, I, I think it's that trend now. Loads of girls had track suits that were, or like track suit style things that were like um, uh, showing the midriff, which looked quite nice. I saw a girl with like a nice little puma with like an orange stripe on it. Just kind of copied the hair and Preston thing, but it looked quite nice. So all the girls are looking amazing with their colourful braids and their colourful weaves and shit. All the boys had their good outfits on. Do you know what I mean? They had their kind of like side pouch bags doing their kind of dancing circles, you know, hey, hey, ah, all that shit. Um, so that was cool to see. But yeah, it was just a good, cool crowd, man. I enjoyed myself. I think it was fucking awesome. It was fucking awesome. Um, and yeah, painless experience. I love I love going to those kind of places and just registering on by yourself again. Like the asking of people of it's annoying, isn't it? Like, hey, can you do me a favor? No favor, just register in, put your name in and see what happens. And luckily I got in for this one and yeah, very, very happy with the results, um, with the night overall. So yeah, Young Bane smashed it. I would have wished again, so it's a little selfish wish. I just would have wished I saw I wish the album reflected 
more of the young Bane I know from YouTube, but I understand he's a fucking pop star now. He has to appeal to more people than, you know what I mean, my dusty self in Stratford. But yeah, um, he smashed it, man. He was really good. And Miss Banks as well. She, she was a standout one. She's gained a new fan in me. Um, I didn't know. Again, I didn't. I wasn't that familiar with her outside of the, outside of the Kodak Black Freestyle. But she fucking smashed it. And the DJ as well. Jeremiah Asimaya. As Asimaya. Asimaya. I should be able to pronounce it. It's bad that I can't pronounce black names, huh? Sound like a fucking bounty, but um, as if I've got the most easiest name to pronounce. You know what I mean, I'm going on like my name is fucking Charles James or some shit. Um, <laughs> anyway, reaching up to an hour now, and I need to get ready to go and DJ. Um, so I'm gonna leave you right there. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Agostino Zinger Show episode number 129 as always for more information regarding me visit my website axinozinga.com um and i'll be seeing you guys again next week for another brand spanking new episode of the podcast but yeah but um but yeah have a good evening um hope you have a great weekend i've got nothing planned for the weekend have I? what am i doing this weekend i'm djing tonight what's happening tomorrow nothing son no i don't think i'm doing any fashion i'm, I'm probably gonna go see your mum on saturday and then um um no see i'm on a sunday and I watch football unfortunately i have to watch fucking main ivy fulham i'm sure all the games we should win we either draw or lose so one or the other um and if rojo plays oh if not if you want free money right for the weekend bet on rojo getting a yellow card i wish i bet on it the other day um against um arsenal when he came back in but i guess no one would have bet on that because it was you know he had he'd been out of action for a while but i think after everyone saw how rash he is people are gonna expect it in you now um but I was also surprised that um, it was, what was it? Frelini's first yellow card came in that game, innit? Of the season. Considering how clumsy he is and considering how many fouls he gives away, it was surprising. But if you're on free money this weekend, uh, put a tenner on Rojo getting a yellow card any time. It's impossible. He has to. They've got Andre Scherlo in their team, right? Yeah, exactly. He's very fast. Um, they've got Mitrovic as well, who's very elbowy and big. So he's definitely going to get yellow cards somewhere or the other. There's no way he's not going to get yellow card. So if you want some free money, uh, bet on uh, Marcos Rojo from Man United getting a yellow card any time within the 90 minutes uh, during that game. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I think that's what I'm going to do. Maybe go see my parents on the Sunday. And yeah, just carry... Oh, and the long run is on Sunday too. Got to do my long run. Got to do my sprint, my sprint re repeats tomorrow. So probably like 10 to 12, 200 meter runs. And then on the Sunday, do a long... Probably like a six miler to kind of get the lungs going. And you know what I might do actually? I might try and run that with that music after listening to David Goggins on Joe Rogan podcast, which is, I think you should check out as well. It's a really good interview. But yeah, anyway... That's enough for me. Going to wrap up. Stop rambling. Thanks so much for tuning in to Action Zinger Show. That was episode number 129. I'll see you guys again um, bright and early next week. Take care. Have a good weekend.